All right. Our main topic today is to talk about weights and measures associated with chemical uh, reactions and chemical uh, equations. Um, when we write chemical equations, whether they are very simple, like a synthesis reaction, or more complex, uh, they are really just recipes. That's all they are. So if we say lithium plus sulfur makes uh, lithium sulfide, it's a recipe to make lithium sulfide. It is no different than if we said, I want to take pancake flour and add water and make pancakes. Uh, that's a synthesis reaction. It has two reactants and one product. All recipes tell us the ingredients as well as the quantities. So one of the things that you may have noticed in what I just told you about those two recipes, whether it was I could take lithium plus sulfur and get lithium sulfide, or pancake flour plus water and get pancakes, I didn't tell you how much. And certainly if you've ever made pancakes or cookies or pies or cakes or any other uh, uh, recipe in the kitchen, you uh, have to measure, you have to know the quantities. So in the kitchen, you use all sorts of different types of measures. Uh, dry ingredients like sugar and flour, we measure by cups or half cups. Um, uh, in uh, Europe and other parts of the world, sometimes we use uh, uh, grams. Uh, moms uh, have a scale in their kitchen, uh, especially grandmas. Uh, they have scales in their kitchens where they would measure out amounts of flour and sugar. Smaller, uh, lesser ingredients, things like spices, we oftentimes measure in teaspoons or milliliters or tablespoons. In chemistry, we use a quantity with a name called a mole, M-O-L-E, and it is not a little furry critter that crawls around in the ground. That's what Fred thought it was, uh, but uh, I had to correct him a little bit there. So we need to talk a minute about what a mole is. So let's go back just a second, back to our kitchen, uh, because if we talk about the word dozen, we know that that means 12. And we know that we can have a dozen of almost anything. We could have a dozen eggs, a dozen pencils, um, a dozen cars. A dozen just means 12. It doesn't mean what it is, it just means how many. A gross uh, means 12 dozen. So that would be 144. So again, we could have a gross of nails, a gross of peaches, um, a gross of cars. And we have other words that mean quantities. We have a bushel, which refers to a basket. Uh, you may be familiar with that with different uh, fruits or vegetables. And there's other words that you maybe have never heard of, like a kenning uh, or a peck. Uh, if you have a horse, uh, you are familiar with the term hands because that's how we measure the height of a horse. So we have lots of words that refer uh, to quantities. In chemistry, our recipes are in moles. And uh, uh, so when we talk about those numbers that we use to balance, we're really talking about moles. So our problem is that our recipes are in moles, but in our laboratory, our scale and our other equipment only let us measure in volume and mass. So we need a way to convert between mass and moles. So where this process begins is with the atomic weight. So I put up uh, several different uh, uh, symbols, uh, cells that you might see on a periodic table. And so the one with Krypton uh, includes an atomic number in the symbol, electron configurations, uh, but it includes the atomic weight in that upper right-hand corner, 83.8. Remember, we're always going to deal with integers, so we would call that Krypton atomic weight 84. Notice the one below it, magnesium at the bottom, it refers to an atomic mass. Atomic mass and atomic weight are the same thing. 
So it, uh, if your periodic table says mass and another person says weight, they are the same thing, same numbers. Remember though that we want to round them to whole numbers. Uh, so magnesium would be rounded down to 24. Lithium uh, in the upper right there shows it has an atomic number of three, but a mass of 6.94. We're gonna round that up to seven. So when we want to talk about moles, it's really a very simple conversion. We said that the atomic uh, mass of lithium was seven. And you can check your periodic table to verify that. And that means that there are seven grams in one mole. That's it, seven grams in one mole. So if I had two moles, then it would be two times seven or 14 grams. So I'll give you a minute to think. If I had 28 grams of lithium, one gram, two moles is 14 grams. Let's see, three moles, four, how many moles would 28 grams of lithium be? 28 divided by seven would be four. How did we do that? Division, okay? Just simply we divide it. We took the mass, divided by the atomic weight, and got the number of moles. So in this case, uh, if you look at your periodic table, you'll see that the atomic mass of calcium is 40 grams for one mole. So if I gave you 120 grams, how many moles did I give you? Well, we're just going to divide. So 120 divided by 40, will be three moles. So 120 grams of calcium is three moles. That's converting from mass to moles. So obviously we can go back the other way. Again, if we start with lithium, having a mass of seven grams for one mole. So if we have two moles, okay, let's see, two moles. One mole is seven grams. So two moles is 14 grams. How many grams would five moles be? Let's see, two moles was 14. Three would be, three times seven is 21. Four times seven would be, so five times seven, how about 35 grams, five times seven. So how did we do that? We're multiplying, just the opposite of what we did before. So in this case, if calcium again has a mass of 40 grams per mole, if I have three moles, then I multiply three times 40 and I get 120 uh, grams. So I have a seesaw activity for you of converting mass to moles and back again. And I have more instructions there, another video for you to watch. And I've provided answers uh, in my uh, portfolio in seesaw. So enjoy the activity.